Hi right, folks, Crossy here from the Lost Art Podcasting. Just before we begin, I just want to say a quick thank you to both uh, Esme Patterson and Frank Turner for taking the time out of the interviews, as well as uh, Anthea from Extra Mile Recordings for uh, giving me the opportunity and also allowing me to interview both artists. Uh, so yeah, please enjoy them both. Thank you very much. We interrupt this program to bring you a special report. <laughs> Hello, welcome once again to the Lost Art Podcast, and I'm here with a very special guest today, flown all the way from America, oh, she looks a bit Irish, uh, it's uh, singer-songwriter Esme Patterson. <laughs> Hi. How are you doing, Esme? I'm great, I'm yeah. great. Cool. Yeah. It's, I believe it's your, your Brentrance. It is it? my Brentrance, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, not tonight. Not tonight, well... Technically. Yeah. We're it's a UK entrance. We're in the UK, right? yeah. yeah. Uh, no, we're in the EU, I mean, still, tonight. Uh, yeah, but it's part of the UK as well. So. Sure. I, I guess I'm a little cloudy on the <laughs> distinctions these days. <laughs> That's no problem. Uh, so, for people who don't know at home, who is Esme Patterson? Because it's sort of your first time over here, people might be sure. Oh, sure. So, uh, <laughs> yeah, I'm, I, I guess, yeah, I, I am an American. And, uh, <laughs> Good place to start. Oh, gosh. So Even from, though from what I've read, it pains me to say these days. <laughs> uh, singer, gambler, songwriter. I'm a gambler, yeah. <laughs> I love to gamble. I like to play dice. Ah. Uh, I like to play loud rock and roll music, even though tonight it'll just be me. Yeah, this is cool. the only show of the tour that I'm playing solo. Oh, right, and cool. I usually have a really loud rock and roll band with me. So tonight will be a kind of an unusual, rare evening where I'm, I'm playing all by myself. All right. You performed uh, last night, I believe. You headlined last night at a show, was it? Uh, I did one of the Ruby sessions, oh, right. which was, how was really how was that? cool. It was so cool. It's yeah. such a cool event. Oh, awesome. Yeah. And they give they give all the proceeds from the door to the Dublin Homelessness oh, right. uh, cool. Commission that I believe finds warm spaces and comfortable places for people to be. And that's I was glad to help support that. Awesome. Uh, so you filmed the video for We Were Wild in Alaska on your iPhone. I, I did. So it yeah. also, we can also add sort of editor, camera woman and director, uh, editor even, sorry, or director. <laughs> so you're a woman of many, many talents. Well, I, <laughs> I had never shot or edited a video before in my life, but I guess I am a firm believer in uh, anybody's ability to do anything they set their mind to, yeah. I guess, within reason. So... I, uh, my label didn't have any more money to pay no. people to make <laughs> music videos, and I wanted to continue making art yeah. uh, to go with the song, so I just did it myself, and I taught myself how to use iMovie to edit oh, it, cool. and uh, I, I uh, would do it differently if I did it again <laughs> than knowing how to use it now, but... Uh, we did some great shots. Why, so. thank you. I mean... It, I can't really take credit for it. It's just so beautiful there. I was just, you know, yeah. filming. Yeah. Was, <laughs> no, it was difficult because it was good to see how you get the train footage and like on the plane and stuff. Because mm-hmm. it's a lot. I, I was like did these catch and stuff at home. Oh and yeah. Just see yeah. some of like the, the scenery there. And, and, it's yeah. unreal. Yeah. It was my first time to Alaska too, wow. and it just blew my mind. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Uh, so it's your, we were wild. It's your third album. Yes. Um, and I believe you sort of took like a different approach to how you recorded your previous albums, like a sort of longer pre-production period. Mm-hmm. So yeah. That, that well, the biggest difference was that somebody gave me some money to make, <laughs> which I've never had anybody yeah. uh, before I made the record wow. give me support to do it. Yeah. I, it was always, I was just asking favors from all of my friends, which I still did this time. <laughs> but I just took about seven months to record it which wow. and and about a year of pre-production before that too so it was a more careful uh more in-depth process of recording than I've ever done before usually it was just I'd write the songs and then go in with some friends of mine and and try to record it as best as I could in a couple of days or over uh, you know 
couple of days here and there over a couple of months, and this was a really immersive experience where I, it was all I did for seven months, and I mm. nearly lost my mind. <laughs> Maybe I did. I don't know. Uh, you seem okay. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> Who knows? <laughs> Hard to tell. <laughs> Uh, so you remind me sort of a bit of like sort of who would you say your influences are? Because to me the sort of the sounds of Kate Mello and sort of it was like a bit of Alanis Morissette maybe and like your, your, your style. It, do you say that just because she's also a girl? No, it's just like the sort of the old, the old sort of songs. Uh, I li- I really like Alanis Morissette actually, but in uh, influences I was definitely oh. thinking about the Talking Heads a lot. Wow. Uh, which they do really kind of like groovy, like, dancey music that's not uh, appropriating from another culture, I feel like, or anything, and uh, that was important to me, to have original ideas that weren't uh, borrowing from uh, someone else's culture, which a lot of people do in music, and that's, I guess, their choice, but, uh, yeah, so, I I also really, but I, I was raised listening to like 60s and 70s R&B and soul music and so I think that definitely influences my singing a lot in a subconscious way and jazz too that's the music I like to listen to so I think that influences the way I sing Um, but I also really love Patti Smith and I really love a lot of female punk rock um, Kathleen Hanna and you know all that stuff and so that's all in there too yeah that's cool. I like I like almost everything. That's good. <laughs> That's what I say to a lot of people. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm like a bear. It tastes good all year. <laughs> yeah, I'm the same myself. Cool. <laughs> I've got a buffet to go to later, so <laughs> much food will be devoured. Mm-hmm. Um, also, again, like going back to your videos, your video for Feel Right. Oh so yeah. There was a lot of. I watched it for a time. It's like sort of it reminded me of something that should be like an indie film soundtrack. Oh, like a, cool. sort of like maybe like a driving song. It's like it's a, for me, it's a driving song. I put it on if I'm driving. That's cool. Like that. <laughs> but um, so it looks like you, from what I read on the YouTube comments, you filmed it in LA. Is mm-hmm. that right? And yep. then it's sort of uh, one of my best friends in the world who I've made three music videos with now, uh, one for each record. Wow. Uh, it, was, it was his idea to make that video, and uh, it seemed the concept was really simple. Where he just ran at me with a stick. Yeah. <laughs> That's it. All of, different places in, in the city, but we wanted it to be kind of uncomfortable and dizzying yeah. because the song is about cognitive and emotional dissonance. Right. So. Yeah, it's just the way it's all. Sort of, I'm sure there's like one shot where you sort of walk a bit startled that he's going to run into or run, <laughs> like plow through you. It was really <laughs> fun. We had so much fun making it. And he's a he's a genius. He's yeah. a brilliant brilliant filmmaker. I always feel really lucky when he makes time mm. to work with me. Was it that sort of thing that you're filming like so many different locations? So is it sort of getting permission from the place? Like, I'm going to dance like an idiot for a bit here. Just some, my friend's going to film it and then I'm... Yeah, we didn't ask <laughs> any permission ever. Yeah. <laughs> we just, that's how we always do our videos. We've yeah. been all three. We've oh, been right. in places where we didn't have permission and just kind of walked up and yeah. m- made a music video. Uh, <laughs> film it and run sort of thing. But we did ask people on the street if they wanted to stay be there and stand yeah. with me when I was dancing and some someone let me hold their dog for one ah, shot. I was so. say was that your dog but No. <laughs> I think the dog's name was Miracle though, yeah. which was pretty cool. Shout out to Miracle. Yeah. <laughs> What's up Miracle? If you're if you're listening. <laughs> um so you're on tour, got coming over to England. Um how was that for you sort of as a when you make your official brand brand <laughs> Well, uh, it's really it's really wonderful to be here, but I, I do feel a little bit conflicted in being away from America right now, where I feel like every it's a giant trash fire basically. Yeah. And I, I feel a little guilty not being there uh, to help protest and to help kind of protect the people that need protecting. And uh, I, I do feel a little bit guilty that I'm not there, able to be on the front lines, but. I uh, am interested to talk to people here that have been through with the Brexit situation kind of a similar regime change and uh, kind of hear how people are dealing with that here and coming up with solutions together and so uh, I'm hoping to continue the work that I would be doing in the States uh, out here Um, 
but yeah, it is a bit of a conflicted feeling. Right. Yeah. So you are a sort of bit of a um, how to describe it? Not hippie, but hey. you sort of. I oh, no, not a hippie. I'm not calling you a hippie. I'm just saying you're sort of a sort of a free thinker. Sort of. You say. Uh, I'm. I'm a person that believes that all humans should be treated with respect. Yeah. And that's what's challenged right now. So I, mm. I, I don't think that's much of a free thinker as a uh, compassionate, empathetic human yeah. being, which it's the, in my country that basically half of the country declared war on, wow. on the other half. It yeah. is the way I see it. And so it's sort of like us having the remain on leave for the Brexit. Sort of, it's the same over in America currently. Would you say? Or well, and it's just dangerous. It's a dangerous regime change where mm. people like basic safety issues are are coming to the forefront. And it's mm. not even about free thinking. It's about protecting people that are in danger because. Uh, a white supremacist was elected to the highest office in the country. Yeah. That's that's dangerous to people. So I don't even think I'm much of a free thinker. I well, even though I probably am, it's just a basic safety issue now. Wow. Mm-hmm. I'm very angry. Also, <laughs> I have the sadness. You seem quite chilled. The sadness currently. was taken over by anger in the last <laughs> couple of days. <laughs> Wow. You seem quite chilled currently. <laughs> Good. <laughs> so you know pre show nerves or anything tonight? No what? No pre show nerves. Uh we'll, uh, I'll probably get some yeah. when we get closer. Mm-hmm. Do you see do you have any like pre show rituals or anything you do sort of before on this or a sort of? No, mm-hmm. actually. Uh yeah, right. I feel like I don't have any real patterns in my life <laughs> in any way. Being a person that's constantly travelling the uh, Routine is a luxury that you don't often have. Yeah. Uh, so no, I just kind of jump in blindly to every <laughs> situation. That's way it be, I find. <laughs> yeah. I can't do a routine anymore. I'm getting out of bed by eleven o'clock every day, but that's me. That's great, <laughs> man. So I would do that if I could. God knows. <laughs> um, so some of you stand out tracks me on your album. We were wild. Um, obviously, it's feel right. So like a driving song, good driving song. Uh, the Moth Song, mm-hmm. which the title sort of got to me originally, sort of called The Moth Song, but then I listened to it and I was like, oh, no, it's, it's, it, it grew on sense. me. So. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but then also, like, Alone, uh, Come See Me, and Yours and Mine, sort of like my oh, standout great. tracks for your album. Cool, thanks. So, yeah, cool. those are all songs I'm proud of. I probably won't play all those tonight. Some it. of them sound <laughs> better with the band. Ah. But. Uh, I'm I was hoping it would feel right, it. but I, I will do that. One. Awesome! Thank you very much. I will. I'll just be <laughs> screaming away. On my own. <laughs> but it, I'm I'm excited tonight to play a few of the quieter songs I don't get to play. Yeah, cool. Uh, and yeah, so that'll be fun. <laughs> uh, so you can find Zippy's album on iTunes, Spotify, CD, and also limited edition vinyl. It's recently That's came right. out. Yeah. Uh, I think it was, is it maroon red? Am I saying that right? It is. It maroon? is. Yeah, so. I, I haven't seen it yet. I'm excited oh, right. to see it. I, uh, I think it's here somewhere in this building. Ah. I haven't. Yeah, it was meeting me here, so I, oh, cool. it, I'll be seeing it for the first time also. <laughs> so, do you get to choose a color for that? Was it your choice, or was it just all? It was. Yeah, I want. I'm. I matched it to my lipstick. Oh right. <laughs> I thought it was like some sort of like personality thing or something like you're gonna say. I've chose red because of this. But no. No. It's just matching the <laughs> lipstick I was wearing, which is a fun thing to do. <laughs> Why not? <laughs> uh, so you can catch me, uh, Esme, in Salisbury on the 18th, Liverpool on the 21st with Frank Turner. Uh, do you want to plug your social media while you're here? Do I what? You pl- plug your social media? Oh, uh, I'm just <laughs> Esme Patterson on, on social media. Yeah, just yeah. find her on Google. There we go. That's me, yeah. <laughs> Esme I, don't, I don't think there's another one. Maybe there is. But... Yeah, there could be. I'm not sure there is, but yeah, I'd like to meet her if she exists. <laughs> well, it's been lovely to meet you, Esme. I've only met two in my whole life. Two Esmes? Mm-hmm. Both in oh, Washington, right. D.C. for some reason, but mm. yeah. That's <laughs> strange. <laughs> yeah. Cool. 
Uh, so you can find her on EsmePatterson.com, uh, on Twitter at Esme Patterson, and of course on uh, Facebook, Esme Patterson. Mm-hmm. Instagram uh, too, but that's all. I think that's it. Cool. Yeah. Uh, find her album again on Spotify, iTunes, on CD and vinyl, and available at all good retailers. Uh, and it, of course, it's always better to support the artist and the lo- local record stores by, rather than downloading or streaming something online because we work hard to make this and Spotify and iTunes give us a fraction of the money. So it's always better if you if you want to support the artist, buy a record at a show or, or at a local record store because you're supporting the, the community and the, and the artist better. Just Just to say putting it out there <laughs> that's, what, that's what I meant to say great <laughs> um, but no thank you very much Esme it's been thank a pleasure so to meet much. you yeah um, I'm, gonna, I'm looking forward to your show tonight and uh, enjoy your tour thank you so and much and the branch friends. yeah branch <laughs> here we go <laughs> so for the last out of podcasting I've been Coxie she's been Esme Patterson mm-hmm. and you've been listening thank you very much